Uh, now we're going to uh, look at a Latin square extension problem and explain how to uh, convert it to a, a root placement problem. So the idea is we've got this uh, table here, uh, a 3 by 5 table um, with numbers 1 to 5 in it, and on each of these first three rows each number appears precisely once. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, there's uh, no, so there's no clashes in any row, uh, in any row there's no number repeated, but also in every column no number is repeated. Here 135, here 435, here 125, no number is repeated in any column. And what we want to do is to add an extra row uh, to maintain this property. So in this extra row every number should appear precisely once, uh, but also we don't want to have any repeats in any column even after we've made this extension. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, so here you know, in, this, uh, in this column you know, we've got a 1, 2 and 4 already, we're not allowed to have those, so we have either a 3 or a 5 here. Here we've used 2, 3, and 4 already, so here we only allowed a 1 or a 5, here we're only allowed a 2 or a 4, and so on. So if you want to think about this kind of in terms of a job allocation thing, you can think of it like this. Right? You've, got, uh, um, you've got five students, students 1 to 5, uh, on a, some kind of a, a work placement scheme, you know, work experience, and they go to a factory with uh, five departments, A to E. And uh, the idea is that every student is su uh, supposed to spend one day of the uh, supposed to be there for a week and uh, five working days, and each student is supposed to spend one day in each department. Uh, but the, the bosses of each department they can't handle more than one student at a time, uh, so uh, <clears throat> so we only we're only allowed to have one student in each department. Okay, so this is what we did for the first three days. Uh, student first day, student one went to department A, student B two went to department B, and so on. And the second day, student two went to department A, student four went to department B, and so on. And yeah, and then here we are in uh, on day three, student five went to department D. Okay, so now we have to decide which departments the students go to on day four. <clears throat> and uh, you know, so that so we have to give a job to every student, and they're only qualified to do the jobs that they haven't done already because that's the rules. Um, so on, only students three and five are qualified to do uh, job A because uh, they've done one, two, and four already. Uh, one, two, and four have done done job A already, um, and students two, three, and three and four have done job B already, so they count as no longer qualified for job B. Only students one and five are qualified for job B, and so on. So yeah, we've got a job allocation problem, and we can uh, draw up a, uh, a chessboard diagram for it as usual. Yeah, so here, um, <clears throat> you know, here we've got job A. Students three and five are, are qualified. Here we've got job B. Students one and five are qualified. Here we've got job C, uh, students two and four are qualified, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> and so we can perform the job allocation by placing rooks here, like uh, if we place a rook at B5, uh, saying we're going to give uh, job B to student five, so uh, um, so we mark the five here. Um, and uh, now we used to have a five here, saying that five was available for job A, but they're no longer available because because uh, 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 five is doing job B. So only only student three uh, is available for, for job A, so we'd better assign uh, uh, student 3 to job A like that. <clears throat> okay, uh, and now uh, you know, if we go look here at uh, job E, um, so students 3 and 4 used to be qualified, but we've uh, we've decided that uh, student 3 is going to do job A, so uh, only student 4 is left, uh, corresponding to the fact that we've only got one white square left in row E. Um, so yeah, we make that assignment. Uh, uh, yeah, student four is going to go to department E. <clears throat> okay, and now, uh, yep. So now we've still got to uh, still got to assign uh, uh, C and D. Uh, and C, we've only got one one white square left um, in uh, in column two. Uh, so we have to have to place a rook at C two, and then we've only got this white white square left uh, at D one. So we put in the D one. Okay. So now we've got a full rook placement on this board. And corresponding to that, we've got a, a, a new row uh, for this diagram. The new row is 3, 5, 2, 1, 4. And we check, well, so across there we've got each number appearing precisely once. Um, and also we've got no repeats in any, in any column. Because um, you know, uh, you know, we, we only allowed ourselves to choose from 3 and 5, and they don't appear here, so uh, we can't have created any clash like that. So we've uh, succeeded in adding a new row according to the rules.